All right. So this week we have the pleasant Kara Murray of Alair Homes joining us, uh, another St. Albert uh, resident. Uh, she uh, moved from uh, Swift Current very earlier in her life and has been in St. Albert for 37 years. Her family includes, uh, including her brothers and sisters, still call St. Albert home. Uh, Carrie is married to her husband, Zach, as some of us have met for 16 years. Also her business partner. Um, oh, there goes my list. Sorry about that. Went sliding down. Uh, they have a daughter as well, uh, Lennon, who's 10. She's been homeschooled and is almost as tall as Kara. They also have their puppy, uh, Cooper. Kara is involved in many community initiatives that give back, such as art walks and fundraisers. Something that you may not know about Kara is that she had a 13-episode, one-hour-long radio show, which was on Saturdays between 11 and 12 p.m. Uh, she would interview people and groups that make positive impacts in the uh, community. So, Kara, uh, before I give it, or I'm going to give it to you, but can you give us a taste of your radio voice? They were all pre-recorded, so I was able to read you my radio voice over and over. They'd be like, hello, everyone, and welcome to One with Kara Murray. <laughs> okay, so yes, here I am, Belair Holmes. Thank you for the introduction, Kyle. I don't really have much to add to that. Um, so I just want to jump in and tell you a little bit about me as a builder and my passion, um, how it relates to homes. So it's to me, it's not just slapping up some walls. Um, turning the keys over and, you know, making a profit. To me, I really have um, a passion in making sure that what we build, because it's got longevity, that it actually serves its purpose and it's intentional. So first of all, I want it to make sure that it meets the needs of your family. You know, whoever's buying that house, it needs to meet your needs. I want to build a house for you, not have you move into a house that I designed and built and you have to work around it. Um, in your home, can you grow old in it? Can you age in place if you so choose? Is your home inclusive, whether it's... Um, you know, you, your loved ones, or even people coming by to visit, if, do people with disabilities and various needs, can they actually access your home? And is it functional? Um, I like looking at fun things, like we don't have to get stuck in just limiting ourselves into just, again, a house. Can we incorporate um, automation? Can we look at, uh, you know, going more net zero and sort of a green-based house? So I, I like to bring that information to clients. Um, I like to know what is your vision and what is your home? I know people think a lair and they think a lot of these big custom sort of humongous houses well yes but there's also you know smaller homesteads and other things we want to build the house that suits you that's the beautiful thing about custom um in building a home is a large investment it's it costs a lot of money and um i want people to be happy to give me their money and by that i mean i want them to understand the value in what we're doing and i i don't want people being worried that what they're getting um is not worth the money that they're spending um to me, it's very important that I'm constantly learning and educating myself, not just in the field, the, the realm of home building, but in the overall construction industry and any sort of um, side um, complementary um, industries. And lastly, is I don't need to be an expert in everything. Um, I That's where I have a, com I compile my network of experts to help me um, and help our clients. So for example, I've been able to utilize uh, Kevin, who's been helping us um, with a home that a client wants to just sell. They don't want to move back into it. It was insurance bill. They want to sell and get out of the area. And Kevin's been instrumental in helping us put together a house that will sell um, and build and perform us so that we're not spending too much money that these clients will be able to sell the house at a profit. So um, very, very big on networks. Um, so quickly building a home, just a couple things to consider while you're building a home. Just want to talk to you about the three quote rule, the emotional curve of a build and some general tips. So I wrote a blog called on false economy. It's on my website. So Alaire St. Albert, if you want to read it, but one thing, um, that I think is key to know about it is false economy is something that costs less at first, but results in more money being spent later. I think this applies to pretty much all of our businesses. You know, people are like, why would I pay for, you know, bookkeeping? Why would I pay for a writer? Why would I pay for all this? But it's because it it gets you more business. It makes sense, right? So um, anyways, the same thing holds true in building a home. Sorry, I feel like I'm rushing through this, but um, the idea of the cheapest, people kind of are like, okay, you got to get three quotes. And somewhere down the line, it's been reduced to, okay, you get the cheapest one. Who's the least expensive? Um, and while you should talk to multiple builders, you also want to make sure that there's value. It's not just about price. You want to make sure you click with them. All, all, all the points about um, 
BNI, you know, like the giver's gain, the relationships that all applies to when you are hiring someone to build you a, a home. So first of all, yeah, there's some other things to look at. And when you are getting the quotes, it's important to make sure you're comparing apples to apples. For example, we got a set of plans from somebody who sent it out to three builders. He was building on an acreage. We came in the highest and he asked us why we we're so much higher. And when we looked at everybody else's, we included things like the cistern and the septic. Um, other, the other guys didn't. So that actually brought us down even cheaper than some of the other builders. Um, you know, we're very transparent with our markup. Some people won't even tell you what they're going to, uh, you know, there's surprises in the contract, right? Where they, they can add change order fees and all this additional stuff. So it's important you're asking all of that when you are getting your quotes. Um, and sometimes the cheapest quote isn't always the best quote either, because some, why are those people under valuing their, their services and it costs money to have a business. And if people aren't making enough money to run the business, they're going to not pay the sub trades. They're going to not be able to finish your home. They're going to go out of business. You don't have anybody in there to complete the warranty, complete the work. So you want to make sure that um, you are in fact getting, you know, a uh, good value for your money. Um, and would they also cut corners and sacrifice the bill for a profit? So just some things to think about there. Um, when you're committing to, let's say, a $700,000 build and you're going with the lowest bidder, ask yourself, are you saving $50,000 or are you throwing away $650,000? So it's another, another way to look at it. Uh, yeah, so you don't want to hire these guys. Um, the emotional curve of um, building homes. So this one was from another Allaire partner that I absolutely loved. And this is sort of the mood level and it's consistent. Kyle, you probably even... You're probably looking at this and being like, oh, yeah, Renault's, they go through the same thing. But everyone's excited in the design stage and planning it. You know, we're like, oh, we're creating. Then you start getting down to bids and contracts and money. And then people start getting extremely stressed out. Um, then they start seeing some action going on, right? They're like, oh, we're finally starting the project. This is where like 75% of your budget is going to be spent. And most of the time, and it looks like nothing has been done. Um, so what, by the time they get down here, they're like, I just spent all this money and this is all that you're at. So that, you know, this part just is where people get very stressed because they don't understand all the work that goes in on these end. However, once they get to start seeing all the pretty stuff on the, you know, oh, there's my cabinets, there's all this pretty stuff. Then they're like, woohoo, okay, my house is coming up. And then of course, at the very end, very exciting. So it's, it's interesting to know that if you guys are ever building a home, you will go through this. And actually it's funny, it's the contractors do the same thing because we get stressed here, we get stressed here, it's dealing with the client's stress. So it's just something that uh, to kind of keep in mind and some game planning for success. So this are some tips. I hate that picture of me. I don't know why marketing uses it. I look like I'd rather burn your house down than build you one. It's crazy, I don't like it. But some of the tips um, is just obviously research, research who your contractors are, find out, you know, uh, find out, do they have referrals? Do there lawsuits against them? Do your due diligence. Um, the other thing is accountability. You want to make sure that you know everything that's going into your house. You want that project manager to make sure that there's, you know, they know what they're getting. You're aware of the supply chain limits. Um, you get all that information from your project manager. Um, planning. You hear me talk about this a lot too, is it's, it's cost maybe $50 to make a change in planning. It can cost you like 20,000 or more to make a change in construction. So put all that time and effort in planning. It might seem like it's taking long and it's not worth it, but it will make your project less expensive and more efficient in the long run. And this is the other one, get to know the team. So as a contractor, we're the ones that are usually dealing with the clients. It's important though that the clients, and if you guys are building a home, that you know the sub trades, you know, you know who's putting in your flooring, you know who's doing your plumbing. You really want to make sure that they're part of the team and they're part of the end product. So you want to make sure you do your research on that as well. And communication. So it's ongoing. Like I showed you the emotional curve. It's very stressful for people. Um, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of cats you're herding to build a home. So you want to make sure that everybody's open, communicating and in the know as much as possible. Um, that's just the rest of some of my amazing team that I'm so fortunate to work with. And there we go. Talk to me. So if anybody has any questions or comments or you want to learn more, you can reach out to me. I can give you some more information on any of that. Or you can um, yeah, go onto our website. Oops, and that's it. Amazing. Such a good presentation, Kara.
Uh, we have time for one quick question. E and I start now. E and I start now. Like everyone says it. Are we all saying it? I'm what confused. What are you saying now? Do we all say D and I? Oh, terrible. Yeah. Start now. 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 Do you want you to say D and I? You know. Say it more casually. Like yeah. we're not trying to rehearse the most impossible <laughs> phrase in the world. Now. Now. Be and I start now. Be and I start now. That was the best one yet. <laughs>